Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is from medical surgical nursing, again from eye disorders. It is blindness. We will learn about features and management of blindness. Also some few things, few couple of things else than that. Definition of blindness can be, according to WHO, visual acuity of less than 3 by 60 or inability to count fingers in daylight at a distance of 3 meters can be defined as blindness. There is categories of visual impairment or blindness which is divided as numerically maximum less than or minimum equal to or less than. It has been divided into low vision, blurred vision or disturbed vision and then blindness. When there is 6 by 18 to 6 by 60 visual acuity, then it is low vision. Finally, when there is totally no light perception, it is blindness. All those are progressive conditions that might lead to blindness. Yes, blindness can be prevented, it can be managed, treated on time, but early detection is important for that. 180 million people in the world are visually disabled. Out of them, 45 million are blind. Where 80% of the blindness is avoidable. Prevalence of blindness according to causes is highest in cataract, 19 million. After that, glaucoma, 6.4 million. Trachoma and childhood blindness, greater than 1.5 million. In India, there is an annual incidence of 2 million cataract induced blindness. 6 to 7 percent of children aged 20, 10 to 14 years have visual problems. Following could be the etiology of blindness. They are cataract, glaucoma, diabetes, diabetes mellitus, degeneration of ocular tissue, uncorrected refractive error, corneal opacity, optic atrophy, and congenital causes. Whereas risk factor can be age. As a refractive error, trachoma, conjunctivitis is seen in children and cataract, refractive error, glaucoma, diabetes mellitus are seen in adults. Regarding sex, higher prevalence of trachoma, conjunctivitis and cataract is seen in women, leading to higher prevalence of blindness in women because cataract, trachoma, these all were the risk factor for blindness. Next, malnutrition, occupation. In malnutrition, vitamin A deficiency, protein energy malnutrition can lead to visual impairment. Whereas, if there is continuous exposure of some dust, some chemicals for a long period of time, then also that might create blindness. Social class surveys state that blindness is more prevalent in poorer class people. And social factors wherever there is poverty, ignorance, lack of education, lack of community hygiene, and inadequate healthcare services, blindness is seen. This is the pathophysiology of blindness. First of all, risk factors. Risk factors like reduced blood flow, chronic inflammation, genetic cause. These all progresses towards impaired phagocytosis. After that, there is lipid perioxidation buildup that disturbs protein metabolism of the body. There is formation of pseudoprotein. Looks like protein, but it is not protein. It is also called as drusen. So pseudoprotein formation. After that, there is formation of photoreceptor blocks choreocapillary complex. Photoreceptors that should be contributing to vision forms a complex by mixing up with other proteins. After that, it causes retinal pigment epithelium damage also photoreceptor damage that leads to blindness. We have types with features. I will display the diagram also. Let's see the features first. In color blindness, first type is color blindness. There is decreased attention span while coloring because the person is not able to focus towards the color. There is also difficulty in identifying the colors apart, difficulty in separating the colors. Next is night blindness. The person is not able to see in dim light or during night. Also, if that person tries to drive during night, that person will not be able to see other cars or other vehicles with light. In snow blindness, when the person is exposed to snow, there is sudden pain, redness, 
vision difficulty in eye because the light reflecting back from the snow has created irritating effect especially ultraviolet radiation creates snow blindness symptoms can remain for 12 hours in complete blindness the person is not able to see at all it is also called as legal blind it cannot be corrected with glass or contact lens also in complete blindness there is always a foreign body sensation in the eye though there is no visual perception but the person can feel some foreign body in temporary blindness there is there are other symptoms like headache vomiting unable to coordinate movements this may be a warning sign of something more serious temporary blindness might be a sign of permanent blindness actually and permanent blindness itself it is complete or full loss of vision the person will not be able to see even the brightest light and visual acuity will come down to zero there is also cloudiness of lens usually permanent blindness is seen as genetic not because of any disease or something it can be but usually it is seen genetic caused by genetic reasons next is unilateral and bilateral unilateral is one side one sided this can occur due to injury retinal nerve injury or due to diabetic retinopathy due to diabetes in unilateral blindness also pupillary light reactions are absent and there is acute pain in the affected eye in bilateral it can be caused by cataract both eyes bilaterally pupillary reflex is absent in most of the case bilateral lesions can be present in both eye there are there might be presence of lesions visual acuity becomes less than 25 50 in the better eye in bilateral one eye can be worse than the another so this better eye means visual acuity is comparatively better than the worse eye this is a diagram for color blindness normal healthy eye there is a comparison can visualize all the colors clearly whereas a color blind person cannot visualize any color clearly night blindness this is how a person sees during night time a healthy person versus right side is this is the how a person sees during night a person with night blindness see during night there are two pigments rods and cones in the eye that rods receptors are not able to work properly in blindness in snow blindness wherever there is exposure to snow eye becomes red swollen irritated and inflamed in complete blindness person is not able to see anything not even blurry so that person might need some help for movement prevention of blindness can be divided into four halves initial assessment intervention long term measures and evaluation initial assessment can be used to find out the cause and find out if there is any other blindness in the family family history in intervention we provide the actual management management from primary level secondary level till tertiary level in long term measures we try to prevent each and every complication related to blindness and in evaluation we measure the effectiveness of every intervention that we have provided in initial assessment we obtain the history of the patient most important can be age occupation age because blindness is prevalent more in older age so age is important occupation because one of the cause of blindness is occupational exposure chief complaint present complaint and medical history medical history might include the history of diabetes and hypertension also performing eye examination physical examination detailed eye examination which can help us to identify which part is having deformity methods of intervention now intervention can be done from the primary level government has provided facilities from the primary level like there is a treatment at at phc treatment regarding blindness there is promotion of personalizing through health education there is utilization of existing resources to provide health education regarding blindness regarding cataract regarding glaucoma 
in secondary eye care that is one level up now it includes mobile eye care and some zonal level or district level hospital where there is management of cataract trichiasis ocular trauma there can be medical and surgical both management in secondary eye care similarly in tertiary eye care there is national or regional hospital here advanced surgery using advanced technologies performed like detachment surgery cornea grafting also eye rehabilitation center specific program contains the programs which addresses only one part of diet one part of health or one age group specific program can be trachoma control only trachoma control school il program because disease related to eye can be started from the school so screening at school becomes more important also vitamin a prophylaxis because this is the most important nutrient that need to be contained in the body to manage blindness so vitamin a prophylaxis also occupational il services as already said due to occupational exposure eye can suffer from various diseases so occupational il services should also be provided that can include six monthly checkup or monthly checkup emergency follow up regular follow up and vitamin a distribution vitamin a prophylaxis distribution long term measures contain prevention of risk factor so that it can save the life of people in a long run it includes safe drinking water nutrition personal hygiene in evaluation as i said before we measure the effectiveness of care that we provided evaluation helps us to find out whatever gaps is there in our provided intervention also to fulfill those gaps this is a slogan vision 2020 the right to sight this is a global initiative started by who also un main aim of this initiative is to reduce avoidable or preventable blindness by the year 2020 objective of vision 2020 is to assist the members country to develop a sustainable system that will help to prevent and eliminate blindness avoidable or preventable that means that can be managed or prevented by 2020 treatment now treatment includes many things first of all nutritional changes vitamin a and protein supplementation should be provided in daily form daily diet also diet should be fiber rich and plenty amount of fluid should be provided cataract surgery is next surgery of cataract can help the patient prevent the complication that might occur due to cataract treatment of other causes like diabetes glaucoma uveitis hypertension that can prevent blindness also corneal transplantation corneal transplantation can be done to correct the impaired vision once cornea is transplanted the person who is a partially blind or fully blind can acquire normal vision again as nursing management we can manage to disturb visual perception anxiety of the patient and we can prevent the risk of injury for visual perception disturbance we can find out the causative agent and treat it for anxiety patient needs to know what he or she is suffering from also patient also needs to know that that condition can be treated prevented and also complications can be prevented for injury if the patient is at, is at risk of injury because there is lack of vision or no vision nurse can provide interventions like elevating the bed rails orientation orientation to the ward placing of the call bells now this is about national blindness control program this was initiated by india in 1976 There are globally 39 million blind people, and India has 8 million blind people. This is a many years. This is a prevalence of many years. Data regarding prevalence of blindness of many years, more than five six years. 
So it was found that out of 39 million blind people globally, India has 8 million blind people also among them. More people, that is 8.5 percentage of people, belong to the age group greater than 50 years. Goal of this program was to reduce blindness from 1.4 percent to 0.3 percent by 2020. This is the logo of the program. Objectives of blindness control program are cataract operation, eye screening, distribution of spectacles for the person who are having defective ears, backlog of avoidable blindness, strengthening and upgrade of universal eye care, and strengthening of existing infrastructures. Activities of this program is cataract operation first, then involvement of NGO, information education and communication, IEC, management of information system, information regarding blindness, this information is provided always in poster form, pamphlet form, also in the local language, local terms, so that every age group, every educational status people can receive that information. Also, there is school eye screening program as we discussed. Children also suffer more from eye related disease, so school eye screening program, collection and utilization of donated eyes, and control of vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A supplement can be provided or vitamin A in dietary form can also be provided. This is about eye prosthesis. Eye prosthesis is artificial eye. It is a plastic made prosthesis that can be implanted in the orbit, eye muscles. And it is provided to the people who who has a physical deformity of the eye. They provide both functional and cosmetic results. It can be done without surgery. Some eye lenses, contact lenses can be implanted without surgery, but some needs, some lenses need surgery to be implanted. The surgical procedure are enucleation, evisceration and extenteration. There are temporary shells which are placed behind the lens. People who have lost their normal eye, lost it structurally or functionally, can use this prosthesis. Next is eye banking. The corneal transplantation, corneal donation, which is done by one person, can be stored in eye bank and then provided to next person. So, eye bank is the collector of the, the cornea so that it can be provided to next person. The donated eye are provided to corneal grafting surgeons through the eye bank. There are stages of eye donation which are donor selection, tissue retrieval, corneal examination, tissue transportation, storage and distribution. Following are the drugs used in eye. First of all, there are routes of drug administration to the eye. They are topical, periocular, intraocular and systemic. Topically, drops, ointment, gel can be provided. Periocularly, subconjunctival, peribulbular, retrotubular drug can be provided. In intraocular, there is intracorneal, intravitreal. There are systemic. Systemic drug can be oral, intravenous, or intramuscular. Drugs which are used for eye disorders are, first of all, mitotics, psilocarpine, mydriatics, cycloplegic, anti-inflammatory, anti-infective, and anesthetic. Anesthetic can be given before some procedure, like we discussed about eye prosthesis, yes, such procedure, anti-infective for any kind of infection present in the eye, anti-inflammatory for eye inflammation, cycloplegics, mydriatics, mitotics, according to condition, to relax the eye. So these were the drugs that are normally used for eye disorders. Thank you so much. Next topic will be discussed in the next week.